in the last stream, we were, of course, working on trying to automate the production of charcoal carrots and uh, the sending of charcoal carrots over to our endoflames. The end goal, of course, being to produce enough mana to progress on through the quest book, because one of the next quests that we have coming up here is a quest to make five terror steel ingots. And as luck would have it, I think we actually do now have the mana required to make five terror steel ingots. Each terror steel ingot requires half a mana pool worth of mana. And so uh, we have one full mana pool here, and then we have three mana pools that are more than half full. And so we should therefore have more than enough mana to make that terror steel. I did come on a few hours ago and we were fully out of carrots. We are now fully uh, out of carrots as well. When I came on, I did grab a couple of the uh, watermelons and the beets. I think I grabbed about a thousand of each. Yeah, you can see we're down to uh, actually just shy of 500 of each of those. So I burned about 1,500 melons and 1,500 beets with the lava to get even more charcoal. And then I put that charcoal into the uh, the nether chest that I've placed above the hopper over here, just so that I can add like extra fuel to the end of flames as and when it's needed. Because earlier uh, when I came on, these weren't quite uh, full enough to make the terra steel. But thankfully now we have it and we should be good to go. However, before we can actually get to making the terra steel, we do of course have to make the terrestrial agglomeration plate. To do that, we need three blocks of lapis, one block of mana steel, and then one each of the rune of water, rune of earth, rune of fire, rune of air, and rune of mana. We did make the rune of mana in the last stream, so we only have these four left to do here. Of those four, I think the rune of mana is going to be by far the easiest. It's just uh, five mana steel and then one mana pearl. For the mana pearl, we are going to have to get a, a chorus pearl. And then as for the five mana steel between streams, um, I did go ahead and make yet more of this uh, mystic iron here. And so uh, if we just go ahead and craft that up, that should get us a new block of mystic iron. I almost accidentally made a, uh, a chest plate there. That would have been quite bad. And at that point, we can just do one of these. And that's that block bit taken care of. We are going to need even more mana steel. I think we do still have a little bit left over from uh, yesterday's stream. Yeah, we have the six required here for making the rune of mana but then on top of that each of the other runes the rune of earth the rune of air and the rune of fire they also each require one mana steel ingot so it probably wouldn't be a terrible idea to get like another nine mystic iron which i think isn't going to be too difficult i get that smelting right away here and speaking of smelting i'm actually also right off the bat gonna get all of our iron and start running that through the squeezer because I think we're going to need quite a bit of iron today. I have done some more geode opening between streams, so we do have currently 149 iron, but uh, looking ahead at uh, some of these last few quests, they are going to require a ton of iron in order to, uh, to get this going. So while we wait on everything to uh, smelt up, let's take a look at some of the other items required for uh, the Rune of Earth, the Rune of Air, and the Rune of Fire. So the Rune of Earth here, each rune, by the way, requires a mana steel and a, a mana powder, both of which are easy enough to get. Um, I did do a little bit more... Uh, charcoal grinding between streams and so we should have all of the carbon dust required to make the inferno dust to make the mana dust yeah that should be easy enough let's go ahead and quickly drop that into the mana pool there i also did a little bit more in the way of uh, soul sand making and so we should be able to fairly easily i think make all of the dark souls required these just require fond memories corrupty dust and a soul the soul being uh, soul sand smelted so let me quickly check how much uh, soul sand I currently have. We have 16. Let's grab, I think three is the correct number. I think each of the uh, the remaining runes outside of the mana rune do require a soul there. And I did also between streams, uh, much to my dismay, uh, also get uh, three more fond memories here. I did have to make some more golems and I did have to be uh, slightly unfriendly towards those golems in order to get those fond memories. But now that we have them, uh, we should be able to make the uh, the spirits required fairly easily. On top of that, for the Earth Rune, we need Apple Jello, which I did go ahead and make between streams. Again, the recipe, uh, nice and simple, water, sugar, gelatin powder, and apple powder. So I think, really, the only thing that's going to be difficult here is the block of egg charcoal. We do need a Seed of Life, which should be pretty easy to make. It does require a crystal, and I assume all of our crystals are in block form. They are indeed. Let's go ahead and craft up another Seed of Life there. Perfect. For the block of egg charcoal you need nine eggs and so what i've done between streams of course is uh, i have temporarily picked up the spiked plate 
that used to be over here on top of this uh, pedestal, and I've replaced it with a hopper. So now all of the chickens that spawn out of this spawner are kind of trapped down in that pit. And of course, over time, those chickens will produce eggs. And of course, those eggs have been collected in the hopper here. Nice. Uh, so at this point in time, we can probably get away with uh, replacing down the, uh, the spiked plate. I don't know how easy that's going to be, given that there were so many chickens in that spot. Let me quickly see if I can't make this work. I think possibly if we replace this kind of cobblestone here and then go and break the hopper, we might be able to place the spiked plate down kind of underneath there. We totally can. Nice. Look at that. And they all die instantly. Wow. I had no idea that that was the case, but there we go. So we now have uh, multiple stacks of eggs, which is perfect. And uh, for the actual block of charred eggs, we of course only need nine. And all of those nine do need to be in, uh, in charcoal form, which we should be able to do fairly easily if we just do something like that. And boom, look at that, block of egg charcoal, perfect. So that should be pretty much everything for the Rune of Earth, actually. Let's see if we can't make a couple of, uh, of Dark Souls here. Let's grab that uh, soul sand we were smelting earlier. And then uh, if we craft those up into the Dark Souls, one, two, and oh, we're missing one Corrupty Dust, which we're gonna come back to maybe. Actually, it's not too bad. We need uh, three Arcane Dust and we need one Oak Wood. That's really not too bad. It is going to mean getting some more crystals here, which is just an electric diamond. I'll go ahead and take like two of those for now. And I will also kind of preemptively throw down an oak sapling. We currently don't have any oak wood, but uh, if we just do that, and then while we wait for that to grow, let's go and quickly throw those electric diamonds through our blood infuser. And then of course, we'll, uh, we'll crush those down, grab an oak log, and that should be everything for our next set of, uh, of Adele wood which in turn should be everything for the pixie dust, which in turn should be everything uh, for that last uh, dark soul. So boom, there is our Adele wood log. Do we smelt that? We do, we smelt that into that uh, that dark matter there. That should not be a, a problem for us. And uh, once that's done, we should be pretty much done with the rune of earth. As for the rune of air, I think this is gonna be the most tricky. So I'm actually gonna come back to that in a second. The rune of fire, I think is actually very easy. TNT, of course, we can make with gunpowder and sand both of which we should have and uh, we could do it with this uh core here but i don't really think that's too necessary and uh, we also need a fire diamond which we've made a bunch of so far and then we need a seed of the nether which is uh, two shards one block of coal and two scorched grit none of that seems particularly difficult uh, and so i think that shouldn't be really too bad for us whatsoever so corrupty dust into one final dark soul and I think that's everything for the Rune of Earth. It is. Let me make sure we have it all. We have the uh, Dark Soul. We have the Seed of Life. We have the Block of Egg Charcoal. We have a Mana Steel, a Mana Powder, and we have the Apple Jello. And we should probably go ahead and actually start making these so I don't uh, like just start putting things away. How much Living Rock do we have? We have three Living Rock. We are going to have to get a little bit more because we need one Living Rock per rune currently. Uh, we need at least four runes. So uh, let's get a little bit more ancient cobblestone down around here. While we wait for that to uh, finish up doing its thing, let's go and start putting these onto the, uh, the old runic altar. So jello, egg charcoal, seed of life, dark soul, mana steel, mana powder. Perfect. We are of course, once again, going to have to move our mana spreader. And any second now, we should be good to make our first batch of earth roots. And there we go, perfect. So let's grab the living rock here. Um, I guess we might as well go ahead and make the mana rune, right? Let's get our uh, mana pearl. And then let's do one, one, two, three, four, five. And boom. Unfortunately, you do only get one rune of mana as opposed to uh, all of the other runes here that you do get two of each time. Thankfully, we only need one for the actual craft here. The rune of fire isn't gonna be too difficult. TNT, nether seed, dark soul, Mana Steel, Mana Powder, and a Fire Diamond. And then the reason I've left the Rune of Air until last is because there are three items on here, the Fiddledew Fruit, the Fermented Feather, and the Colored Feather, which are gonna be a little tricky for us to get, I think. So the Fiddledew Fruit requires a Flawless Calculator, which we currently don't have. 
You can combine four broccoli together to get that fiddle-do fruit. Broccoli, I think, is going to be fairly easy for us to get. Uh, if I do recall, there is a recipe for broccoli seeds. Yeah, this one right here, we can turn regular seeds and pumpkin seeds into broccoli seeds, and then we can grow those into uh, regular broccoli that we can then go ahead and craft up, of course, into the uh, fiddle-do fruit there using the flawless calculator. The flawless calculator in and of itself is something we are going to craft, and uh, it's a lot of recipes that we've seen before, a lot of these uh, assemblies, uh, both calculator, advanced, and atomic. A lot of stone, a lot of buttons. I have done quite a bit of stone smelting between streams, so getting all of these really shouldn't be too difficult. The only things that are new, really, are the flawless diamonds, which are actually not new. We've made these before as well, and the end diamond, which we did make in the last stream. So all stuff that we've made before and really shouldn't be too difficult. We also need the fermented feather, which I think is probably the easier of the two feathers. Let me uh, quickly see what we've got over in here. We currently have 30 feathers, which I think should be enough. Let me bookmark these uh, items here. So for the fermented feather, we need a fermenting bucket, which is a bucket and three glass. I actually don't know if we have to fill this with anything or if just the bucket itself is enough. I think the bucket itself is probably enough. And then we need uh, six feathers and one jungle juice. So for this, we need three vines, one bit of heat, one water bucket, one what what powder, and one empty jar. The water bucket, easy enough. The empty jar, also not too bad. It's made with glass and a tiny bit of iron which is made with the bit measure that we made way back at the start of the stream with one iron ingot, and you get 36, which is perfect. So that should be pretty much everything they're taken care of. We might need a little bit more in the way of glass. We do. However, we do have uh, sand here, so we can just go ahead and smelt two sand to get the five glass that we need. And then at that point, we should be pretty much good to go on this. Let me check the uh, the what what powder. This is more feathers, more vines, and some drying agent. Actually, not too bad whatsoever. So once that glass is done, that should be an empty jar makeable. So boom, there is the empty jar. Let's go ahead and craft up the juice here. Let's put that uh, bucket of water in, and that should be everything, I think, for the jungle juice. And at that point, we get three fermented feathers. Nice. Now, the colorful feather isn't too difficult. It requires a regular feather and then eight dye, as well as, oh, sorry, seven dye, and then one enzyme extraction agent. We have... Red dye, blue dye, and bone meal, I presume, for white dye. We need yellow dye, which is easy enough to get. We can get dandelion yellow. Cactus green we can get. Magenta is, like, purple and pink, I think, which we might be able to get. Pink is uh, obviously white and red, and then purple is blue and red. So, yeah, we should be able to get both of those fairly easily. So there's magenta dye. That's easy enough. Uh, green dye, of course, we can just take our uh, cactus and uh, smelt one of those down. That's going to get us the cactus green. As for the enzyme extraction agent, that requires three beetroot, or three of any seed, I guess, uh, three nether wart, one more wart wart powder, which is, uh, again, fairly easy uh, for us to do, along with a bit of water and some nether wart. So the nether wart, uh, we can make using the uh, mutation paste. I think we will. Um, I am going to swap out the chorus root here for, like, regular Minecraft seeds because that is significantly easier for us to make. There we go. That's the enzyme powder done. Uh, let's grab that cactus green. So as for the black dye here, after talking with the Twitch chat a little bit, it turns out we are in fact going to have to spawn squid in order to get it. However, my initial suggestion was to just build a body of water like you would normally do to try and spawn squid and then just wait for them to spawn. However, the Twitch chat has recommended that instead we try and get the uh, Solus book for squid. Uh, of course, starting by getting the squid essence and then crafting it uh, into a soul block of squid and then uh, try spawning the squid using our uh, solace spawner over here. And then thus, you know, when they die, we can get their ink sacks. So to do that, we are, of course, going to have to get out of the book, but we're also going to have to get three squid essence. For that, we need these scale chunks. And for those, we need sand with scale fossils. So I think what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to grab some of our pre-existing sand, hopefully not too much of it, and run that through the old atomic reshaper now, unfortunately, much to my dismay, you actually can't use regular sand here. It does say that you can get sand with uh, scale fossils, but this is actually disabled. You have to use red sand or gravel. So I think we're going to have to try and turn our sand into red sand, which we can do in a drying basin with blood. Okay, so I've made a new drying basin, and I have temporarily, my inventory is all messed up, but I have uh, temporarily moved this uh, fluid pipe here over to here so it doesn't connect to the blood infuser. If we do this, that's going to start filling up with blood. And hopefully, we can put the sand in there and kind of slowly but surely turn that into 
Red Sand? There we go. Okay, so it looks like it's actually like instantaneous, which is good. Or if not instantaneous, at least quite fast. Okay, so let's go put the uh, the eight red sand that we do have over into the old uh, atomic reshaper. I'm not quite sure how much we're going to need here. We need three squid, of course. Uh, the odds of getting squid are quite high. It's a 62% chance from uh, a scale chunk, which is pretty good. And we do, of course, have our uh, Vengeance Pickaxe, which has Fortune 5, so our odds of getting uh, the chunks required from each bit of sand over here is actually quite high. So if we take the... Uh, is it the Red Sand with Dry Fossils? Is that what we're after? Red Sand with Scale Fossils. This one right here. So if we drop one of those down and brick it, we get nine scale chunks. And then if we open all of those, we actually got six Squid Essence right away there. So we really didn't need uh, too much in the way of red sand, which is very nice because it was a bit of a pain in the backside to make. But now that we have that, do we have a book? We do not. However, I'm hoping we should be able to make a new book fairly easily. So Soul Book and Squid Essence gets us the Soul Book of the Squid. And so now finally, if we go and swap this out for the Chicken Book, and of course when we swap it out, we are going to get all the upgrades as well. That is to be expected. So I'll throw in the Squid Book. And then we'll shift click in the uh, upgrades here to make the squid spawning hopefully a nice bit faster. And then uh, we should really just be able to wait. I don't know if the squid are going to fit down this hole. That would be my primary concern. They also might die before they get to the hole due to the hole, you know, not being in the water thing. I guess we'll find out. If they don't go down the hole, we can just kill them up here. And really, really need like one squid because we just need the one ink sack, right? Yeah, they don't, they don't quite fall down as I would anticipate. But they do all die and they do all produce ink sacks, which we can definitely gather. And uh, for now, I am going to turn that off because I really don't want more squid spawning uh, down there. So let's grab the rest of those ink sacks. Perfect. Look at that. 11 ink sacks. More than enough. And so back over here, finally, chat, we should have everything it takes to make the colorful feather. And so now the only thing we're missing, of course, is that uh, fiddle-do fruit. All right. So endstone, electric diamond, and obsidian gets us at the end diamond. And then finally, chat, that should be everything that we need in order to make the flawless calculator. So now we have that. We need the broccoli seeds. These are normal seeds and pumpkin seeds. That seems very doable. We have both normal seeds and pumpkin seeds in our system. Let's just run those through the regular old calculator here. And there we go, broccoli seeds. So let's grab the old hoe here. It's been a while since we've used this guy, but I'm assuming that we can just do this, and then uh, if we get some bone meal here, that we can just bone meal that up into regular broccoli. We totally can. And for broccoli later, if we uh, go ahead and add broccoli to broccoli, and then divide that by broccoli, and then add another broccoli, and we get, finally, a fiddle do fruit. So, chat, if we once again head on up to the runic altar, fiddle do fruit, colored feather, Dark Soul, Mana Powder, Mana Steel, and Fermented Feather. And that should be everything for the final rune. We've got the rune of fire, we've got the rune of water, we've got the rune of earth, we've got the rune of mana, we're about to get the rune of air. And so once this is done, chat, we should finally be able to make the terrestrial agglomeration plate. Boom. And boom. Let's head on back to the old crafting terminal. We are going to have to craft up three blocks of lapis, and we're also going to have to put all of the runes into the system here. But that should be everything for the plate. It is. My goodness. That was quite the craft there, chat. We got 16 blocks of uh, chorus charcoal as a reward there, which I guess is quite nice. It has a... Uh, 12,000 tick burn time, which is insanity. But now if we want to actually set this up, I believe that we need some living rock and we also need uh, some lapis. I believe we need four lapis and five living rock here. Oh, sorry, four blocks of lapis and, uh, and five living rock here. So uh, let me do a quick inventory dump because we now have way too much stuff that we don't need to be carrying around on us. But essentially, the way that this is going to work is over here. And I will dig out a little bit of grass here, I think. So once you have a three by three hole like this, I think it's one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four, five with the living rock and the lapis. 
with the terrestrial plate on top, like so. And then all we have to do now is we have to connect the mana pools to the terrestrial agglomeration plate. To do that, uh, we use these sparks here from Britannia. These are made using blaze powder, two of any colored shimmering mushroom, and then an arcane gold nugget. So we are going to have to get um, at least one more arcane gold ingot, although we might already have one available in our system. That was wishful thinking. We do not already have one available in our system. Uh, thankfully, the only thing we're missing is uh, arcane dust. So we can get that, of course, by uh, quickly running the old electric diamond through the blood infuser and then crushing it with the uh, the crushing block. So boom and boom, there's our arcane gold ingot. We can craft that down into nuggets. Now, as for the mushrooms here, we did make some of these last time. We're going to have to get quite a few of these. So I think one of the easiest ways for us to get mushrooms here is going to be with beets. If we go ahead and grab just a bunch of these, we'll do like 16 for now, and we'll craft that into a red dye. Uh, we can then craft that up with a bunch of mysterious dust that we have a bunch of, and some glowstone, which we should have maybe a little bit of. Up until now, I have been using the crushing block to make glowstone. However, it has been pointed out to me uh, by the Twitch chat that we can make our glowstone in the algorithm separator, we can take the same imprisoned light that we've been crushing, and if we run it through the algorithm separator, we have a 100% chance of getting glowstone, whereas, of course, as I mentioned a few times before now, if we crush it, there's a 75% chance that you get glowstone, but, of course, a 25% chance that uh, you just lose the glowstone. So running it through here is definitely the safer way to go. Uh, over here, how much glowstone do we have? We have two, so we can go ahead and make uh, two red mushrooms here, which should be enough for uh, one spark. So once we have eight more glowstone, back over here, we should be able to do something like this and get ourselves eight of these. And then from there, we should be able to make, I, I think, four more sparks. And so the idea here is that we can take these sparks, we can put one on our terrestrial agglomeration plate, like so, we can put the other four on each of the mana pools. So one, two, three, and four. And so now when this plate needs mana, it will pull that mana from these mana pools. Now, in order to make Terra Steel, we have to drop down a mana steel, a mana pearl, and a mana diamond for each Terra Steel that we want. So in total, we're going to need five mana steel, five mana pearls, and five mana diamonds. The mana steel we have, we have seven. So uh, we can put two of those back and we're still good. Uh, the mana pearls we of course don't have, but we should be able to go ahead and make five of these. How much chorus fruit do we have? Uh, the answer is more than 20, so we are good. Let's go ahead and grab one, two, three, four, and five of those. Perfect. And then as for the mana diamond, we need five end diamonds. So for that, we're going to need five end stone, five electric diamonds, and five obsidian. Uh, we don't have five electric diamonds. However, I'm fairly certain that, yeah, we do have five fire diamonds, which, of course, as per usual, we can throw into our conductor mast right there while we wait for that let's grab the five endstone and the five obsidian and uh, we should be pretty much good to go here boom boom and boom there's five end diamonds let's uh, quickly drop those into one of our mana pools That gets us four mana diamonds, and yeah, at that point, we should be pretty much good to go. So you do have to do these one at a time, but if we do one, two, and three, you'll see this uh, funky animation here. You'll also see the uh, mana being moved over from the sparks. Because we have so many mana pools, the animation is actually going quite quickly. But there we go. There is our first Terra Steel. Just four more to go. And there we go. Five Terra Steel ingots. My goodness. It took a while but we got there in the end, and as a reward, we just get more arcane blocks, which is less than ideal, but uh, I guess fine at this point in time. So now we move over to this guy. This is kind of the main block that we're working towards here now, and it's the composer from Solus, from the mod that adds the spawner. And the reason we need this is that we have to use the Solus multi-block in order to actually get the Midnight Jewel, and then to get the Niobium Ingot. So to get over two here and to actually make the multi-block let me check the solace guidebook real quick okay so right now it doesn't actually have the option available to us just yet it's locked uh, the guidebook here wants us to make ash and we are going to have to get ash um, i actually think we might have some ash 
Oh, we don't. It's a different kind of ash. Okay, how do I get ash from Solace? The Twitch chat has pointed out that we can just craft ash directly into ash. So we can get our ash from the, uh, the incinerator. Down here, we can put anything into the incinerator, get ash, and then just craft that ash into Solace ash, which is perfect. And uh, that's that bit taken care of. So I think that should unlock a few more chapters down here. Yeah, so we have Dark and Steel, and then as we go along, it's going to unlock even more here. I was hoping to show you guys uh, the multi-block. I'm not a huge fan of the fact that this guidebook like locks things off until you've unlocked them. It makes it a little difficult to kind of look ahead at what you're working towards, but essentially we're going to make a multi-block structure here. So uh, to get that multi-block structure, we need to craft 20 Arcane Gold ingots. We need 10 Composer cells. These are made from Arcane Gold ingots, hence why we need them, uh, as well as the Terra Seal, hence why we need that. Uh, two blocks of Dark End Steel and then the Oscillating Gears uh, that we've been using for our spawner up until now. We then also need 10 blocks of Dark Ender Steel. This is made from Ender Steel ingots, which in turn are made by smelting Ash Ender Iron Dust, and the Ash Ender Iron Dust is made by crafting Ender Iron Dust with Ash, the Ender Iron Dust we made before. It's Iron Dust plus Ender Dust, Ender Dust we get from those Ender Burn chunks. So let me clear out my inventory because it is full of a bunch of stuff that we don't need at the moment. Right at the start of the stream, we did begin crushing down iron. So we do have a bunch of iron dust ready to go here, which is perfect. And so how much of the ender dust do we have? The answer is not a lot. We have two ender dust. So we are going to have to get uh, probably quite a lot more ender burn chunks, but that really shouldn't be too difficult actually, because we do have um, a bunch of these ender burns here, which can be crafted into ender burn chunks. So the fact that we left our enderman spawner running for so long earlier in the stream is, uh, is really paying off here. So uh, if we take those and just craft that with the sledgehammer, we should be able to get a bunch of ender dust. And we can then craft that with the iron dust. Now, let me run some numbers here real quick. If we're gonna get 10 blocks of dark ender steel, that means we need 90 dark ender steel ingots. That means that we need 90 ender iron dust and 90 ash. That seems very doable. Let me get some cobblestone going in the incinerator. And let's get, I guess, a lot more ender burn chunks. So let's do a stack and a half, approximately. That gets us over 90. And then uh, how much ash do we have? We've got three in there. We have got 22 more in here. That takes us to 59, which almost gets us there. We do, of course, have to uh, smelt all of these as well. So let's get uh, that going, I guess. We probably do want to employ as many furnaces as we can. Okay, so a little while later, I did move the incinerator temporarily up above the uh, energy on error heater here because it is a lot faster with the higher temperature, uh, but we are pretty much there. We have uh, a few more of the old uh, Ash Ender Iron Dust blend to smelt up, but uh, most of it is uh, is done here. I have also started working towards trying to get the uh, Arcane Gold Ingots. If we're gonna make this, make 20 of them that is, we do need um, 40 Arcane Crystal Dust, which means we need 20 electric diamonds to put through our blood infuser. I think I made 12 and put them over here. Yeah, so we need to get uh, eight more of those, which means eight more uh, fire diamonds first, which of course means a little bit more uh, in the way of blaze rods and diamonds over in the old atomic calculator. So we'll take some lava. We'll go through the whole rigmarole once again of making more of these uh, bits of lava sand. We can then of course go ahead and craft those up into blaze rods. And if we take those blaze rods and combine them up with our diamonds here, we can get the remaining fire diamonds and we'll of course just go ahead and throw those into the old conductor mast. We can then take the electric diamonds and drop that in over here. And uh, we should be pretty much there on that front. Now, but that's not of course all that we need for making the arcane gold here. We also need uh, 80 charcoal, which should be easy enough to get. We can of course craft charcoal chunks from our uh, fruit charcoal so we can use our watermelons and our beets in order to do that. I think we have the gold, that's fine. We also need 40 of this dust right here, which means we need 10 bone meal, 10 gas tears, 10 prismarine crystals, and 10 more arcane dust. So it's a good thing that I kind of overshot a little bit on the electric diamonds because it looks like we need even more than, uh, than I was initially anticipating. The gas tears we make from ender tears, and I think we do have more than 10 ender tears over here. We do, we have 27, so I'll go ahead and grab 10 of those. 
I'm hoping we have enough blood in the blood infuser. Yeah, we've got 76,000. I think that actually should be more than enough. Bone meal we have, and then prismarine crystals we can, of course, get uh, from prismarine shards, which we can, of course, get by grinding down our prismarine. So I think that we're actually pretty much there, at least in terms of getting the 10 composer cells. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself here, though, because if we look just a little bit further ahead, the quest after that wants us to make the composer itself, which requires four more blocks of ender steel ingots, which is, of course, more iron dust and more ender dust. Again, I don't think that's going to be too difficult, but it is just a lot more uh, smelting. We'll come back to that in just a second, though. Let's get the grinder going here. Uh, again, it's probably maybe worthwhile if we want to make it quick, just kind of putting the grinder over here. Given the extra heat from the energy on arrow heat, that should make it quite a bit faster. And it also means that all of the uh, resultant prismarine shards are instantly exported, which is perfect. Let's do you over in here. While we wait for those, let's go and grab all of our guest tiers, which are still slowly but surely being done. I actually thought these would be uh, done by now. I guess they're a bit slower than I was anticipating. That is fine. All right, so once we have all of the prismarine crystals and all of the guest tiers, I think we're pretty much there. Let's have a look. Do we have everything that it takes? Let me crush down like all of these arcane crystals. I think 52 arcane dust should be enough. So we are looking to make 20 arcane gold ingots. For that, we need 40 of this dust. Which we can do. Perfect. And then we also need a ton of charcoal. Yeah, that's the only thing we're missing now. So if we go and grab... Just like a bunch of melons here. And we quickly uh, char those melons in the fire. We can then uh, craft those charcoal melons down into charcoal chunks, which we can then reassemble into actual charcoal. Uh, we do need like 80 charcoal, so we are going to need uh, even more than what we currently have. But I think that that should be pretty much everything we need, right? So if we do this and this, we get 20 arcane gold. Perfect. No reward, again. <laughs> but over here, the uh, ingots are also done. And so if we go and bookmark the uh, blocks of dark ender steel, we should be able to craft up, I think, 10 of those. We totally can. Perfect. This time we get uh, more ender bones as a reward, which is nice. Now we have to make 10 composer cells. So this is where this should actually be pretty doable. We need to do this recipe five times. We've already made the arcane gold. We've already made the terra steel. We've already made the blocks of dark ender steel. The only thing we're missing is 10 oscillating gears, which I think we have in our spawner, right? And we can, of course, make more. The oscillating gear is not too difficult to make. Uh, they're made with iron ingots and enderbone gears. Enderbone gears be made with enderbones. So uh, we need, what, uh, five of these? And then ten of these? Yeah, that's actually significantly easier, I think. So let's see if we have what it takes to make all of these. We do have to put everything into the system. Boom, look at that. Ten composer cells. Uh, I will take... Probably an oscillating gear, simply due to the fact that I'm pretty sure this next guy, yeah, also requires two oscillating gears. So now we need to make the actual composer itself, which requires two oscillating gears, which we can just go ahead and make. That's going to be nice and easy for us. Perfect. And then we need one of the composer cells. And then finally, we need four blocks of ender steel. So four blocks of ender steel is 36 ender steel, which means we need 36 ender iron blend. Uh, right now, that means getting more of the ender bones, crafting up even more ender bone chunks, at least until we have 36. We can then go ahead and sledgehammer those down into ender dust, and then we can combine that ender dust with our iron dust. And then just as soon as we smelt up all 36 of the... Uh, 
and the Iron Blend here, we should chat, be finally ready to craft up the composer. All right, so 36 Ender Steel ingots later, and we can go ahead and craft up four blocks of Ender Steel, at which point we should then be able to finally craft up the compressor. Nice. So now, if we look in the Solus Guidebook, I should be able to show you the multi-block structure, this guy right here, uh, that we are going to build in the next stream. So this is a pretty nifty multi-block that allows you to auto-craft. I don't know if we're going to do too much auto-crafting with it, uh, but we are definitely going to use it specifically, at the very least, to craft up the Midnight Jewel and the Niobium Ingot, both of the, uh, the final two quests here at the end of Chapter 4. Now, the reason that I'm putting this off to the next stream is because the way that the structure works here you don't just put it down and then put the items in and it crafts it you actually have to have mobs underneath the structure in order for the composer to work so the composer kind of takes uh, its energy or, or i guess the um how do i want to say this the composer derives its energy from the mobs that are underneath it and over time it will kill those mobs uh, but as a byproduct it actually does the auto crafting that you want it to do so it's quite an involved setup that we're going to do uh, in the next stream we're hopefully going to set up a few spawners and uh, make our composer nice and fast but for now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's stream there. Like I said, next time we'll come back, we'll build the multi-block structure, uh, we will craft up the Midnight Jewel, we'll craft up the Niobium, and then I guess we'll start looking into uh, Chapter 5 here, getting started with a little bit of alchemistry and seeing if we can't become the uh, Volcano Master. <laughs>